So several years ago, I had an opportunity to go through an interview, and the question, one of the questions they asked, and really it was probably the most difficult question that they asked in this interview, was this. So, in one sentence, tell us, who is Steve Qualbin? Now, I, I had no warning, of course, that that was coming. And I had about 12 seconds to come up with an answer in one sentence to try to encapsulate all of my life for this team. And, and so because it was a church setting, I felt comfortable saying, or starting with, um, I don't think I said um, because that would have included the, the sentence there, but I, I'm a follower of Jesus and... I'm a husband, a father, a son, a neighbor, and someone who really enjoys the outdoors. And I paused, and some people were scribbling notes and others, and they said, thank you, and they moved on to the next question. And I, I was really, as I, as I think back on that, I think of what must have been going through their minds because every single person in that room on that team that was interviewing would have taken every single word that I said because they didn't know me. They would have, they would have taken every word and put it into their own context. So when I said, someone who loves the great outdoors, the hunters were probably thinking hunting. The fishermen were thinking fishing. The runners were thinking, running through the trails, you know, and so on, all the way through. And when I said uh, husband, every person in that room, well, you know, maybe it was a husband, maybe it was a, a man who was married, maybe it was a woman who was, or maybe it was a single person, they all had their own definition of what husband meant. They had their own experiences. And when I said father, same thing. When I said son, same thing. They all had their own little definitions that they, of course, didn't share with me of what it was that this was all about, that I was all about. Even when I said a follower of Jesus, everyone in that room had their own definition of what that meant. Now, I'm giving you more notice than I had, and you don't get a whole sentence. What I'm going to ask is that right now you come up with three words that encapsulate your life. Okay, You only get three words, and I want you to think through those three words very carefully, and then I'm going to ask you to share those words with the people around you. So go ahead, come up with three words that encapsulate your life. You have 12 seconds. Got them? It's about 12 seconds. Now, turn to somebody next to you. You may know them well. You may not know them at all. Turn and share those three words that encapsulate your life. Go ahead. Okay, seriously, that sounded like 15 for some of you. Okay, you only got three. Now, when I, I did this the first time, it was so awkward. And I know that every one of those folks drew their own conclusion about those words. But you know what? You know, I, I believe that what Paul just said, I know a lot of you are sitting next to people you know, but I know a lot of you shared with people you didn't know. Okay. Now, my guess is, so Gary's down here, you know, so Gary Pribble's over here. My guess is when, if he said the word husband, that his wife is looking at him saying, I, I get that. I get what, the, I know what that means for the good and the 
Less good, but it's all good for Gary, right? It's all good. Yeah, it's all good. But, you know, she, she has, an ex- you know, she's been living there in the same house, experiencing what it means to be married to that guy. And, but if he were to turn and share it with somebody, that word with somebody that didn't know him, completely different. Completely different story. And so whatever it was that you shared, For some, there was great understanding. For others, very little. Now, I know that um, as we look at God and we look at that journey of Jesus with his disciples, we know from this book that relationships are incredibly important to God. And we know that the first and primary relationship is our relationship with, with him and our, but, but also that love that we have for one another, that relationship that we have with each other. And, you know, as we look at, um, you know, as we've walked through this book of Mark, one of the things that, that God has done through these pages that we've read is begun to show us who Jesus is. You know, um, you know, my guess is that if somebody came up here and I were to interview them and ask for their three words, and then really, you know, you would know more about that person, wouldn't you? Just based on the three words that they chose. But if you think about it, I would need to interview that person much longer for you to gain more understanding, get deeper. But even if, even if that person, let's say it's Gary. Let's say I have Gary up here. Even if we spent the next hour having Gary explain these words, and we interviewed his wife, and we interviewed friends about those three words in Gary's life, you would know a lot more about Gary, but the fact is you still would not have experienced him. And it's the same with this book. So often we dig into this book, and and we're very interested in the facts about Jesus, We want to know everything from Genesis all the way to Revelation. We want to experience um, knowledge. And yet what we see is God saying, I want you to have more than that. I want you to have more than just knowledge. I want you to truly know my son. To experience life with him. One of the... um, we're going to get to the Gospel of John later in the year. But there's a great verse at the end of the Gospel of John where John writes this. But these are written that you may believe in, that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by le- believing you might have life in his name. You see, it's not just about Jesus. It's about life with him. In these first eight chapters of Mark, God invites us into this journey. Not to, not to learn that, oh, Jesus was baptized by John. Check that box. Not that he cast out a demon. Check that one. Not that he fed 5,000. Check. But what he does is he says, I want you to come alongside and through the power of the Holy Spirit experience the power of Jesus casting out that demon. Experience the power of that baptismal moment. Experience the power of the feeding of the 5,000. Experience the power of the parables as Jesus shares them. Experience the power of the healing of a blind man. Experience the power of four friends lowering their friend through a roof and watching their buddy jump up and be healed from being paralyzed. What God does through Mark and through all the gospel writers is just incredible. Because somehow in this miraculous way, it becomes more than just knowledge about. It becomes life with. Life with. And so one of the things that happens with Jesus is he he takes his disciples in a lot of different places. And sometimes they were in huge crowds, feeding of the 5,000 and so on. But other times, Jesus says, you know what? I want to spend some time with you so you can experience me one-on-one. And on one of those occasions, he takes his disciples 
and they're up near the Sea of Galilee, and they take this 28-mile hike, just them, one way, 28 miles, through the hills and mountains and everything else, way up to the area of, around Caesarea Philippi. And you can imagine, can you imagine having those amazing conversations with Jesus on a road like that? But they get up to that area, and it's an area outside of Israel. There's lots of pagan worship going on. They're worshiping the God of the dead. They're worshiping Caesar, all of those things. And Jesus wants to get down to some nitty-gritty with them. He, he, and he, and he, he comes out, and he asks one simple question. Who do people say I am? Who am I? Encapsulate, it's almost as always saying, encapsulate in three words or less, or one sentence, who people say that I am. And so they do. And they come out and they say, well, um, let me find my spot here so I get it exactly right. Some say John the Baptist. And you know what? Everyone who saw John the Baptist had an idea of who John was, even if it wasn't on the mark, they still had that notion. Some say Elijah, greatest of all the prophets. Wow. If that's who Jesus is, that's, that's outstanding. It's amazing. And some say one of the prophets, one of the great teachers, one of the ones who brings justice to the world, or the message of justice at the very least. Everybody had their own idea when they saw Jesus, when they heard the name Jesus, of who he was. But then Jesus drops the other question. Now, you disciples, who do you say I am? Who am I? The ultimate question. And it's Peter who chimes in with four words. You are the Messiah. And Jesus says, you're right. You're right. But even that word Messiah, I mean, they really had no idea what that meant. I mean, he threw it out there, and Jesus says, that's a Holy Spirit-inspired message word, but you don't, you, you don't know. And it is miraculous that Peter got it right, but he had been traveling with Jesus all this time. But what becomes clear very quickly right after this is Jesus begins to say, now, this is what it means to experience life with Messiah, the kind of Messiah I am. You are, in, and I, I, I am going to the cross. I'm going to suffer. I'm going to the cross. I'm going to die. And then three days later, I'm going to be raised from the dead. And Peter said, that's not my definition. That's not mine. And Jesus tells him, if you're going to follow me, it's who I am. It's what I'm about. Now, Jesus um, all along invites them in. And he knew that they were going to have to experience more life with him. In fact, they were going to have to experience those moments at the cross. They were going to have to experience that moment of um, Easter morning on that open tomb. And I have a little diagram I want to share with you. Uh, it's on the back of your bulletin as well. And um, if, you'll, if you'll look at that, there, and, let's see. Oh, it's a little hard to read. So you might want to look on your, on your bulletin. It's a little easier there. Uh, I borrowed this from Don Everts, who came to visit us a few weeks ago. And he wrote a book called I Once Was Lost. And what I love about this diagram is that it it visually summarizes the journey that the disciples were on and is so descriptive of how the Holy Spirit works in our lives and in the lives of others to draw us closer into the life of Jesus. But first, there's, there's two words I want you to focus on as we walk through in these last moments that we have together. Um, two words that summarize God's desire for you. I've mentioned these words several times already. But they summarize God's desire as you read this book, as you read these words, as you study, as you worship, as you live out your life as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus. And that is that it is God's deepest desire 
that you know, not only know more about Jesus, but that you come to Him and truly know Jesus. That you know Jesus. That you come to trust Him. And, and notice, notice first a little handshake, and this is just a great little summary of this, that, that Jesus invites you in, and He says, I, I want you to grow to trust me enough to read this book, to, to cry out to me, to talk to me. And then that second one, the little question mark, to be curious about me, to, to continually ask questions of me, no matter how difficult those questions may be, I want to invite you into that. And that, and that little arrow that has a change of direction, it's change. Jesus invites us to understand that there is going to be change. In fact, he puts it this way. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Must take up their cross and follow me. That's going to be a change. And as you read and as you dig deeper in here, you're going to see that the change that comes as we follow Jesus is not meant to be just this, oh, no, i got to change. But, wow, I get to change. I get to serve with Jesus. Even as difficult as it may be, I get to do this with Jesus. And what we see is as we do that, we experience life like we've never experienced it. We experience joy like we've never had before. And we enjoy peace like we have never experienced before. And the beauty of this picture is as you look um, at, the, at the little... Uh, magnifying glass, is that he does in invite us deeper. He invites us to take that crossways class, to, to dig and dig and dig, and, and to understand that, boy, yes, we're, as we learn more about him, he, the Holy Spirit will work in us to expand our understanding of who he was. It's sort of like, it's sort of like getting to know your friend better. you got to spend time. You ask those questions. You dive deeper with them, and you know them better, and you live life with them every single day. And finally, the little footsteps on the end where Jesus says, now, all along, I want you to walk with me. And the beauty of this illustration is that this is not just our story. It wasn't just the disciples' story, uh, Peter and the others' story. This is, the, this is meant to be the story of the world, of everyone in this world. And the thing is, what Jesus does at this point is he says to every one of you, I want you to be my voice. I want you to bring this to your neighbors. I want you to bring this to your family. And I want you to be that person they trust. I want you to, because as they trust you and they know that you're my child, that you're my follower, they will learn to trust me. That as you, as you encourage them, and, and not judge them, but encourage them in that curious curiosity, those great questions that they're asking, God is saying to us, do that. Because it's through exploring this book. It's through, even if it's a little shallow to begin with, it's through that, that my Holy Spirit will work in them so that it becomes not just knowledge about me, but knowledge of me where they can come along with me. And when they get to that place where they, as they're reading, as they're digging deeper with you, and they begin to see the changes of what does it mean to pick up my cross and follow Jesus, that, that you can show them the joy of that, the hardship as well, that you can share with them and, and show them by your life and by your example how worth it it is to be that kingdom agent on this earth. And then as they dive deeper that, you know, they may go deeper than in, into this than, than you're prepared to do. That's okay. But always encouraging them to say, you know what, learn more about, but don't lose the relationship. Understand that everything you do, everything you read, everything you study, every movie you watch about Jesus is meant to draw you closer in to that living, walking beautiful thing that we call discipleship. 
Jesus makes a promise in the midst of all of that. And that promise is that you're not doing this by yourself. It might be really overwhelming to look at. I don't know that I could do that. You know what? You don't have to. The Holy Spirit does it. The Holy Spirit just says to every one of you, says, you know what? Give me what you got, and I'll do the rest. Love. Care for them. And understand that it's not just the Holy Spirit working in their lives, but in yours. The Holy Spirit. You know, for some of you... <laughs> You may feel like you're kind of on that other end down there where you're still kind of questioning Jesus, really learning more about him. But I want to encourage you to continue in that and to understand that the Holy Spirit will do amazing things in your heart so that you can know Jesus and experience life with him. You know, as we close today... um, I, I, I want you to remember those two words, know Jesus. And in fact, I, I want you to say them out loud right now. Are you ready? Know Jesus. One more time. And as you go, I want you to think about and talk about what does it mean. Is you, if you're doing a Bible study, if you're doing devotions, I want you to ask that question, how is this helping me know Jesus, to experience Jesus now? He has life for you. To quote again from the end of John, that by believing you may have life in his name. That's his gift. And I'm going to ask that you would pray with me as we close and we're going to ask that the Holy Spirit pour into us so that we can know Jesus better. May we pray, please. Lord God, we are so grateful for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your power. Thank you for this book that you invite us into, for the, for the writings of, of Mark, for the witness of, of Matthew and Luke, the witness of John and Paul and the others. And we ask that you would fill us and empower us to experience life with you. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.